feel just coming into this year? I mean, obviously, you know, you've got the senior ball experience, somebody got some more opportunities. Just how much more comfortable you as a coach feel coming into the Oh, man, I'm, I'm comfortable. I was comfortable when I walked through the door. So um, just being able to put another year up under your belt helps, helps any coach. Uh, the experience at the Senior Bowl was great um, for all of us. Uh, continue to learn, continue to learn the coaches that's in this building. Um, it's a super positive for us. Amount of continuity you do in your room year to year, just we don't see it enough in this game. But uh, the one new guy, uh, Greg Bell, undrafted, uh, seen him run the ball pretty hard out there. And the two opportunities we've had to see him, your your impressions of, of what you saw from him coming out of college and what, what he's shown out there so far, dude. Yeah, when you get a chance to turn the tape on on Greg Bell, you see vision. Um, that's one of the things when I was watching him. Actually, it was funny. I turned the tape on. I was watching another running back. I can't remember at the time, and. Um, I remember turning the San Diego State tape on because they do some different things offensively. And he just kept sticking out. This was like a year ago. And he kept sticking out. And I was like, man, I got to find out who this kid is. And um, when I was watching him, as the tape continued to run, you see the great vision, the burst, uh, and you saw his hands. So, uh, and you continue, you see that out here. He has good hands, good vision, and he has that burst. So um, I was excited about having the opportunity to add him on the Lions. The, the running game, obviously, offensive line, running back is a big part. But what about tight end, too, like T.J. Hawkinson, who seems to be developing into a very good blocker? How big of a part does he play in all that? Huge, huge, man. We all know what he brings to the table when it comes to blocking. Um, he's going to give his all. You know, He's going to leave it out there on the field. On top of that, he can run routes. On top of that, he can go and get the contested catch. I mean, T.J. is an all-around good football player. And, um, you know, excited about just being able to work with him another year, being able to get him in the offense and get him going. How excited are you to see a healthy DeAndre Swift? And how much can that change? I mean, the offensive line can make him look good, but he certainly can make them look good as well. Hey, no doubt, no doubt. Just staying healthy would definitely be the challenge. Um, and, you know, injuries happen. Injuries happen. And one of the things that Swift and I had a conversation about is you got to be able to play through some of these as a running back. You know, we all know there's a difference in being injured and hurt. Um, as soon as you step in this building as a running back, day one of training camp, you're not going to feel the same. So there are going to be some things he's going to have to fight through, um, and he's going to have to work through that. So we had those conversations. Some muscle, some, some strength. Was that one of the big? Please don't, don't don't tell him that. <laughs> <laughs> please, please. He's got the sleeves rolled up now. Yeah, yeah. He only had the long sleeves if the gun shows up. So only because he did five push-ups before practice. I mean, <laughs> what? Was that, was that part of it? Was building that strength? Does that go to staying healthy, being able to battle through some things, and just being, you know, a, a stronger guy? Overall? Man, it's so much. Uh, I think you got to be lucky. I mean, you got to remember, man, this is a game of violent car wrecks. And that's how I see it. I mean, you got guys that's running 20, 19, 18 miles per hour and running into each other. So um, sometimes that injury bug hits a player one time, two times, three times, you know, a lot in a year. Uh, over a course of a career, hits them sometimes like that. So um, you got to be lucky. But the thing is, you still got to let it go. And you can't let that hold you back as a, as a running back anyway. So we had those type of conversations. He has to be smart in certain situations, of course. But um, he has to leave it all out there on the field. That is a veteran of getting the pump in before the cameras are on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, he got it down pat. He got baby all over there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Man. As you look at his injury, you know, like, was there, like, looking back at there, then was there maybe an opportunity to play through some of them or come back earlier? I mean, is that part of what's... Um, I don't know. I don't know right now, um, and I probably never know. But I just speaking just from my history and just remember back in those days in the dinosaur days, um, you didn't want to miss any time unless you were injured. Um, and a guy like Swift, man, he's a, he's a unique player. He has the ability to change a game as we all have seen. And you know, of course, you don't want to lose that. So when it comes to you know his coach, I'm. I'm, I'm talking now, and I'm going to tell him the same thing throughout, throughout the year. Hey, man, got to fight through some things, along with everybody else that's on the team. Um, so that conversation is just not for him. It's for everybody. You just asked a question about him, so I want to address it. That's a, that's a toughness 
challenge. So when when you challenge a guy to to have more toughness, to be more mentally tough, how, how did he respond to that? Obviously, you maybe don't know until you see it, but the the initial response. Was Super just, positive. Super positive, and he knows it, which is good. And um, you know, playing running back, man, you you gonna take your fair share of hits, and uh, you gonna give some too. So you just got to make sure you protect yourself when it's the time is to protect yourself. And um, there are going to be times where, you know, you got to put it out there. Both Dan and Ben have said, you know, the, the play action game is going to be a staple this offense. And I really going back to last year, I think we kind of knew that. From a, a running back perspective, like what makes a good play action back? Is it just the production they have? Is there something that, that you can do as a back to make that, you know, to, to sell yeah, that? Yeah, it starts with the running game. game. Yeah. You know, and the play action part of the running game starts with the play action. So they both kind of work together. Um, in order for us to do what we want to do is attack downfield, attack vertically. Um, we got to be able to get those seven and eight man boxes and make them respect us running the ball. And once you get that, that's when you get your one on ones and, you know, your receivers got to win and they will. So everything from the little things, from the fake, uh, to the mesh, to the finish, to the pass being low, to the quarterback sinking the fake. All that stuff matters when it comes to trying to get the ball downfield past the safeties. Given your line and your backfield, how, how good do you think your I'm sorry, say that? Given your, your offensive line and your backfield, how good do you think your play great. action game is? I feel great about it. And that's what we've been working on. We've been harping on a few different things, but that's definitely been one. Um, we want that to be our identity, and it's been a part of it for since I've been here. Yeah, so, you know, last year it was Netflix. We got to make sure he's Hulu this year, right? He doesn't, you know, we got to take him from that to, you know, we got to, everybody got to graduate each year, right? Yeah, he'll get a kick out of that. But, uh, man, I tell you, Craig has been really working hard. Um, and Craig is one of those guys you might have to tell, hey, man, slow down for a second, you know, and, that's during the off season. That's during the season. You kind of got to pull him back a little bit because that's all he knows. Which I, I'm a big fan of that, and I love it. Um, but you got to turn him down a little bit to kind of save a little juice. Uh, with, with Jamar Jefferson, that was a guy that kind of dealt with some frustration with, you know, not playing a lot early last year. Finished with just 15 carries. How, how have you seen him come into this? Go back to the beginning. You said the frustration. Just just some frustration with, with not getting a lot of playing time. Early, um, You're saying he was frustrated? Yeah. Okay. Um, something you said you wanted to see from him, if I yeah. recall correctly. And then, right. you know, finishes with 15 carries, maybe a little bruise, banged, banged up at the end of the year. Uh, how, how have you seen him come into this this second off season? Um, you know, just, just mentally, his approach heading in? Um, it's been good. I think that uh, he had, he's another one that had a good off season as far as pre preparation and preparing himself. Um, and just speaking of that frustration, it's very easy. You want to play? Do more. Period. That just don't go for him. That go for everybody. You know, do more. Show us that you deserve to go out there and play. You deserve to go out there and challenge two, challenge three, or whoever it is. It's very simple, man. You get in my room. I don't have a starter. You want to start, win the position. Glenn Johnson, last month, just kind of talked about the red zone run efficiency and wanted to improve that this year. What is your role within that, and, and where do you kind of see as an area to, to improve? That? Yeah, um, I'm definitely, it's Hank and I, Ben, we all come together and just try to bounce things off each other. But uh, we definitely want to run the ball better in the red zone. We have to. Um, that'll help, once again, that'll help pushing the ball downfield. That'll help in the big red zone, being able to throw the ball a little bit. Um, we just got to make sure, you know, we capitalize on what's in front of us. And it's, sometimes it's the simple things. And when I say simple, I'm not saying you can go out there and do it and it's easy. But I'm saying simple that you don't think of drawing up this great play to work. I'm saying breaking tackles. I'm saying catching the ball and knifing. I'm saying making a guy miss or making these guys tackle you. Stuff like that, uh, that helps. So we've been kind of harping on the things, the simple things when it comes to football to make sure they're not forgotten.